the year 1886, a woman died of Bright's disease at the age of 55 in her family home. Not long after her death, her sister would make a shocking discovery in the room of the recently departed. What she found would have a significant impact on the literary world and change the face of modern poetry forever. But what is it that she found that proved to be of such significance? Emily Elizabeth Dickinson was born on December 10, 1830 in Amherst, Massachusetts. Her father, Edward Norcross Dickinson, was a successful politician and Whig lawyer who acted as the town's treasurer for many years. Her mother, Emily Norcross Dickinson, was well educated, having came from a very affluent family. She frequently practiced gardening and had little to no concern for any issues involving politics. Emily's two siblings, Austin and Lavinia acted as two of Emily's closest friends, accounting for much of Emily's highly selective social circle. For most of her life, Dickinson focused solely on her writing. As a child, her parents saw her as very delicate and often kept her home from school. But when she began attending Amherst Academy, she became highly involved in the work, especially with Latin and science. Dickinson was very interested in botany and even produced an herbarium with pressed flowers and their Latin names. Her interest in botany and nature also translates into her writing. In a letter to a friend, Dickinson once said, nature is a haunted house, the art a house that tries to be haunted. This suggests that she saw nature as a perpetually mysterious thing, an art as trying to imitate nature, and in that imitation, discover its meanings. After the academy, Dickinson attended Mount Holyoke Female Seminary, but only for one year after deciding she disliked the institutional town. After her return home from Mount Holyoke, Dickinson began writing a significant amount, much being in letters to close friends and family. One of the people she wrote to most was Susan Gilbert, who later became Susan Gilbert Dickinson after marrying the poet's brother. In total, Dickinson wrote almost 2,000 After her death, when her younger sister discovered hundreds of unknown poems in the writer's room, that her poems would begin to get recognized. Contrary to popular belief, Dickinson lived a vibrant social life up until her mid-twenties. Letters penned by teenage Dickinson show a desire for both romance and recognition. However, these desires quickly faded after several family hardships, which marked Dickinson's transition into reclusion. Most of the rest of Dickinson's life was spent in solitude, with an incredibly narrow social circle. Some even remarked that Dickinson later in life rarely re left her room, despite her brother's house being directly next door. Still, with her brother right next door and his wife Susan Gilbert, one of Dickinson's dearest friends, she did not completely disconnect from the outside world. Her writing shows interest and opinion on various, various social and political issues, such as women's suffrage, religion, and even the American Civil War. Her voice on women's suffrage is one of the most noticeable themes throughout her poetry as she continually mentions the struggle of female subjectivity, writing things such as, she rose to his requirements dropped, and calling a man a purchaser in her poem, I gave myself to him. Dickinson was raised in a Calvinistic household, one which stressed the necessity for a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Being brought up in a religious environment, Dickinson was frequently exposed to church hymns, which many speculate may have influenced her later use of common meter in her poetry. Despite her upbringing, Dickinson's religious views are often debated, as they were never explicitly stated in her poetry. Dickinson's poems frequently vacillate between the comforts of traditional faith and an ever-growing doubt regarding the existence of an afterlife. Poems such as The World Is Not Conclusion, when they come back if blossoms do, and I know he exists, all reflect her mental struggle of reconciling Christianity in the face of growing social doubt. I contend that Dickinson was heavily influenced by the works of Charles Darwin, which cast a blanket of doubt over religious certainty. Darwin's influence on Dickinson's religious beliefs is especially visible in her poem, the World is Not Conclusion, which discusses humans as species rather than individuals. The first volume of Dickinson's poems was published in 1890, four years after her death. 
Despite Dickinson already having bound many of her poems into books and separating others into groups, it was difficult for her sister Lavinia to publish them. Her poems were separated between various friends, editors, and publishers to be worked on, and since Dickinson used so much unique syntax and form, much of it was lost in the alteration from personal manuscript to print to comply with the popular forms of the time. Eventually, a publication, The Poems of Emily Dickinson, was released in 1955 with the originally intended form and style of her poems. After the publication with Dickinson's original writing, her posthumous popularity grew rapidly. Dickinson's poems are considered lyrics. She wrote in short stanzas, mostly quatrains, which typically only rhymed on the second and fourth lines. Her poems are narrated by a single speaker who is not necessarily Dickinson herself. It is important to note that Dickinson is not the narrator in many of her poems because it forces the reader to concede that Dickinson's poetry is not per perfectly representative of her personal values and beliefs. Dickinson's verse is often classified as common meter, which, as discussed earlier, is the same as in sung music and church hymns. Dickinson's poems are often recognized for their lack of conventional punctuation. Rather than periods and commas, Dickinson uses dashes to note pauses as well as to bridge conceptual sections of the poems. Many have commented that Dickinson's use of dash, dashes may represent her deteriorating psyche, while others express that it simply illustrates her desire to disrupt conventional linguistic relations. The dash also incorporates a sense of uncertainty as they are fluid and indicate incompletion. Furthermore, Dickinson often capitalizes words in order to stress their importance, and in some instances even to personify them. It is important to recognize Dickinson's unique syntax as it is essential to conveying the desired meaning of her poems. Dickinson's poetry is very popular among critics and scholars because of her distinctly moving and varied freeform verse, presumably influenced by writers Ralph Waldo Emerson and Isaac Watts. It's also why she's so popular among the public. Her writing has a very personal and relatable feel to it regarding subjects such as human desire, depression, religion, and the struggle of female subjectivity. 